Action cinema has seen its fair share of heart-pounding moments and adrenaline-fueled escapades. But there's one franchise that has consistently set the bar impossibly high. For decades, we've marveled at the jaw-dropping stunts, breathtaking set pieces, and the unwavering dedication of its star, Tom Cruise, who fearlessly plunges into danger for our viewing pleasure. From scaling the Burj Khalifa in Ghost Protocol to hanging off an airplane in Rogue Nation. The Mission Impossible series has pushed the boundaries of what's physically possible to be captured in camera and projected on the big screen. These movies have become synonymous with action-packed entertainment, capturing the imagination of audiences worldwide. And we all know when it comes to supplying a thrill ride like no other, no one does it quite like Tom Cruise. Now with the release of the latest installment, Dead Reckoning Part 1, I couldn't help but hearken back on the incredible compilation of action this franchise has delivered to moviegoers worldwide. But among all those incredible death-defying feats, there's one scene that stood out to me in particular. An undervalued masterpiece of pure action brilliance. It was a moment that held me captive, my eyes glued to the screen, as the sheer meticulous detail and artistry unfolded before me. As magnificent as those grand scale stunts were, it was this one clandestine scene that struck me differently from the moment I saw glimpses of it in the trailers. Today I want to unravel that scene, what makes it so special, so eye-catching and so enthralling to me. The pristine choreography, the razor-sharp precision and the heart-pounding intensity all coming together in a symphony of action cinema. This is the moment that left me speechless. And I can't wait to share with you all why this bathroom brawl, in my opinion, is the diamond in the rough of the Mission Impossible franchise. Mission Impossible Fallout was released in the summer of 2018, three years after Rogue Nation. It marked the shortest time between Mission Impossible movie releases. And I suspect the reason for that was because this was the first time there was a direct sequel and continuation of story from one film to the subsequent, having us further follow the narrative of Solomon Lane and his apostles. Fallout also yielded the return of writer-director Christopher McQuarrie, also known as McHugh, who made his debut in the MI franchise with Rogue Nation. McHugh and Tom Cruise now have a history of collaborating on great action films. So just know, when these two pair up, you are in for some fun at the movie. This particular impossible mission has our core team Ethan, Benji and Luther attempting to thwart the plans of the anonymous anarchist John Lark. With the world's governments playing past the parcel with Solomon Lane to answer for his crimes, it has left his apostles without leadership, thus having them resort to being guns for hire. Lark takes advantage of this situation and with their help attempts to collapse the current world order by fulfilling a great suffering of nuclear proportions. And luckily for Lark, in Ethan's endeavor to secure the stolen plutonium cores, he ends up losing them when faced with an impossible decision. Now with the IMF and CIA breathing down Ethan's back, he's on a race like no other to recapture the cores before the apostles deliver them to the infamous John Lark. And due to his prior lapse in judgment, he's got a new mustachioed babysitter in CIA operative August Walker, played by none other than Henry Cavill. Not long into the duo's adventure, the two are put to the test when faced against who they believe to be the infamous John Mark. When duty calls, things get messy, and oh, oh, oh do things get messy, because Mr. Lark beats the living crap out of these guys. But what better place for that to happen than a classy bathroom, am I right? After the huge success of Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation, Mission Impossible was again a hot property. Eager with anticipation, I remember when a short portion of the bathroom brawl was released in one of the trailers, and I was re-watching it incessantly. And when it finally came time to watching it in the theaters on opening night, no matter how many times I had watched it in the trailers prior, it blew my socks off just the same. It's incredible that a sequence that lasted but 88 seconds among a movie with a runtime of 2 hours and 28 minutes that's packed to the brim with revolutionary action scenes left such an imprint on me. But in having a closer inspection at how this scene came to be, it started to make a lot more sense why this became my favorite Mission Impossible action scene of all time. The scene was originally planned to take only four days to shoot, but wound up taking a staggering four weeks. Four weeks for 88 seconds. That's like, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, like three seconds of usable footage per day. Four weeks is insane. And maybe to some of you, it might not seem that crazy since it takes years for these films to come out. 
but let me put it into perspective for you. Movies of considerable runtime have been shot in their entirety in that same time span or less. For example, Rocky was shot in 28 days. Damien Chazelle's jazz drummer masterpiece Whiplash took only 19 days. And The Blair Witch Project was shot in a mere 8 days. Now, I get these films aren't anywhere near the scale of a massive blockbuster like Mission Impossible, but considering this scene doesn't incorporate a huge death-defying stunt, complex CGI, props, or set pieces involving hundreds of extras, to me it just affirms the crazy dedication these guys have to getting things pitch perfect. And all that hard work most definitely paid off in delivering an unbelievably crisp fight scene. A scene as immaculately orchestrated as this has talented artists written all over it. The meticulous stunt coordination from Wade Eastwood and Co, the immersive production design of Peter Wenham, the ferocity that Liang Yang brings to the antagonist John Lark, and of course, the extreme dedication to craft that McHugh, Henry Cavill, and Tom Cruise bring to the table. I want to start by giving my flowers to the absolute badass that is Liang Yang, former Wushu champion turned stunt actor known most famously for being Donnie Yen's double in Rogue One, and get this, Emily Blunt's stunt double in Edge of Tomorrow. Yes, you heard me right, Emily Blunt. What, you thought he'd be doubling for Tom Cruise? My guy Tom? Not on his life, literally. There's this great video by Screen Rant where they have Liang Yang talk about his experience shooting the scene. He stresses how dedicated and unwavering Tom and Henry were in their commitment to delivering visceral and real stunt work. They refused to wear pads under their clothing for certain crucial shots, intending to have real damage inflicted upon them to of course elicit real reactions. I, I feel, I feel many, many self wobbly. <laughs> I was like, oh no, 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 no. And this is uh, Tom Cruise. <laughs> I was like, oh, Tom, Tom, I'm so sorry. He said, no. He said, you did, you did ask me to put on pads and I refused. I want you to do it and they want the camera feeling the pain. All in the name of authenticity. McHugh and Cruz are firm believers in a small audience. Tell when something's been cheated, and the one thing that Tom definitely does not want to do is cheat an audience. People pick up on too many pulled punches and fake hits, and it ruins the scene. I could not agree more. The worst thing in an action movie that is already set in a heightened reality is the action not being real enough to lull an audience into believing it. In this, you can almost feel the hits. You can tell the actors are putting everything behind these punches. And this only works when there's a firm net of trust built between the actors, allowing complete freedom in the stunt work. They've given themselves to the scene, and it shows wonderfully. No shaky cam and absurd quick cuts, it's clear and hard hitting. Christopher McQuarrie says he wanted a pure and clean environment as the backdrop to contrast the abrasive fight scene hence the choice of the cleanest men's bathroom in human history. On the other hand, there is an undertone of similarity in how precise and clean the choreography had to be in order to achieve the unbelievably immersive feel. It's impressive how a scene utilizes an environment with so many mirrors. Mirrors are a well-known filmmaking trick to help create the illusion of a larger space. This, coupled with the scene being shot on a wide-angled handheld camera, continued to bolster the pure clean mood McHugh was going for. The bathroom was curated for maximum safety. Foam all over the floors, fake walls, sugar glass for mirrors, all things to further assist the actors to go all out. And the sound design followed suit. The punches, kicks, crashes, clangs and bangs in this silent bathroom provided the perfect acoustics for a beatdown. Whoa, whoa, hold up, pause. You think I'm gonna make a video about the bathroom brawl and not mention arguably the best part? Initially improvised by Cavill in one of the hundreds of takes as a way to reinvigorate his arms. After three weeks of working on the scene, Cavill was beginning to feel the aches and pains on working on a Mission Impossible fight scene, especially when helmed by notorious perfectionists McHugh and Cruz. Cavill also mentions how it adds to Walker's frustration. He's not accustomed to losing a fight, this guy. And in this visual cue, he says, All right, the gloves are off. I'm coming for your head. And how Walker grows a beard and a front shirt pocket with the bicep reload, I do not know. But it's Henry Cavill, so I'll just accept it. The fact that we know Walker is actually Lark really does recontextualize this moment. Walker takes the time to leisurely remove his jacket before coming to Hunt's aid, as he's got a serrated pipe about to pierce his jugular. I love the details, McHugh, you smart dog. And our three brawlers all have such obviously unique fighting styles. John Lark showing immaculate martial arts skills utilizing Liang Yang's wushu background. Henry Cavill being more of a sledgehammer and coming with brute force over technique. 
and Ethan Hunt being shifty on his toes, almost improvisational style. This also backs up the way Angela Bassett's character refers to both of them. You use a scalpel. I prefer a hammer. They embody their characters so well. I love it when movies remember the details, subtle things that minutely make the difference and allow an audience to blend the line of fiction and non-fiction because the character is three-dimensional and it feels tangible in their characteristics. It's a scene we rarely see in these movies, where Ethan Hunt is exposed and vulnerable. He loses the fight, both of them do, until of course they're bailed out in the last seconds by Ilsa. It's also a wonderful setup and foreshadowing that Ethan has weaknesses, and if exploited right, like Solomon Lane plans, can potentially lead to his defeat. These weaknesses make our main character more human and flawed, which just makes for a more realistic and relatable story. He's not supposed to be the Terminator. Even with all the insane set pieces and stunt these movies have set up, mainly with Tom Cruise as the lead, this holds its own against even those in my opinion. So yeah, this is my favorite action scene from my favorite Mission Impossible movie. And yes, I have had the pleasure of seeing Dead Reckoning Part 1, and as amazing as that was, this just creeps above it in my eyes. So thank you all again for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and as always, appreciate you watching. Why won't you just die?